I'm Christine and you have probably been working really hard on your uh, football quilt. I'm doing mine in OSU colors because I am an Ohio State mom. <laughs> um, so I've already finished putting my whole quilt together and I've started to quilt it. Now of course first of all you want to sandwich your quilt and you can see I always like to kind of scissor cut my batting a little bit shorter than my backing just so I have less layers. Less weight is always better. So let's get started. One thing I highly recommend, well there's a few things I highly recommend. One of them is um, if you don't have a magnetic hoop, I strongly, strongly suggest that you get a magnetic hoop. There's a lot of hooping, the you know, the nine patch design, the sashing design, all the designs around the different uh, applique, and this, it would be a lot of hooping and the magnetic hoop makes it a lot easier to um, hoop and rehoop. Actually, what happens when you use a magnetic hoop is the bottom portion of the hoop um, always stays in the machine. You never move it. You only move the top portion of the hoop. Um, and the other thing that's really nice about a magnetic hoop is there are these stickers. It really doesn't matter if you have inches or millimeters. Um, but what's nice about the stickers is you can use uh, the numbers on the side to make sure that your quilt is um, in line. So I've got a four here on this seam. Goes all the way to the four here. I have a four up here and I have it on the five back here so I should probably straighten that out. And that kind of just helps you make sure that your your um, your quilt is in the hoop straight. And you can't really, that's really hard to do with a regular hoop. Uh, one of the things I've done is I have marked the center with a little blue dot. I don't know if you can even see it. Maybe if I zoom in, well, there's a little blue dot. And the first thing I want to do is try and get the needle so it is placed right over the dot. And um, on a Baby Lock and Brother machine, the design comes in already in the center. So all I have to do is uh, hit the move icon and move the needle over. Now on another machine, other machine brands, you may have to find the center of the design because on other brands of machines, they, um, they, uh, you have to find the center of the design because the design comes in where the first stitch is. And on this design, the first stitch is going to be way up here. Um, so just to keep that in mind. So um, I've got this hooped. I've got the magnetic hoop in there and I'm ready uh, to go. I do have this really cool feature on this machine. I'm, by the way, I'm using a Baby Lock Solaris um, and it's kind of very similar to the Brother Luminaire. But there is a, um, a, a projector on this, this uh, machine that actually shows the design and I like to use it because it kind of just it just helps me to really see where that design is laying on the machine and I'm not sure if I zoom in if you would be even able to see that it's a pretty cool feature you can probably see it some part of the design so I can just kind of look left right up and down and the other thing I like to use are these little rulers because I'll tell you a secret. We try to keep, when we uh, design our designs, we try to keep them a quarter inch from the edge. So if I just lay the, the ruler down, I can use that projector uh, and move that design up and down, left and right, to make sure that my design is not touching um, one quarter around the design. So I like that. So let me zoom back out and we'll, this is the first one, and uh, we will... I'm ready to stitch. Oh, the other thing I like to do before I start stitching is I like to, now if you're on a Baby Locker Brother, you need to advance to the first stitch. If you're on another machine, remember it will automatically start uh, where it's supposed to. So on the Baby Lock, I need to get it out of the center position and over to that first stitch. And you can see that's where my first stitch is. And I just like to bring the bobbin up to the top. That's all I'm doing. Um, I'm just bringing it up to the top just so I don't get that big knot on the back of my quilt. Although on the back of this, honestly, you can't even see the stitching on the back of this quilt because I've, well I guess you can, but it's really tough to see because I've done such a good job matching my thread. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't know how tender I am. 
So the thread kind of got away from me. So sometimes if that happens, you can just give it a little tug and it'll pull it back up. All right, here we go. Oops. Now, I kind of did a no-no on my quilt. I, um, I got excited and I stitched, I started down that middle column, just at the, t I started at the top and I just went straight down. Um, but when I got to like the football and the first down block, I got excited and I went all over the quilt and quilted all the, around all the football helmets and, you know, all the, the block, whatever block I was stitching out here, like here I was stitching out the first down and this is in my middle column and then I got excited and I said oh I've got another first down block here I'll just go ahead and quilt around it well what happened what that what that did was it made everything kind of puffy on the middle I couldn't really uh, pull and flatten things out so my suggestion to you is to start in that very top middle column and then work your way all the way down and then go to the next section. So this would be your next section. You would go all the way. Hold on. I guess it would help if I backed up. So this is my first set column. I would do all of that. And the one part I would not do is I would not do this very, very top one. I left the very top one unquilted because I'm going to do that um, all the way around the perimeter at the very end. And then you just go down and stitch all the different blocks all the way down including the one in the middle with your um, uh, cheerleader uh, megaphones and you're going to have to on those uh, rotate it go all the way down and then come in and do all the way down this your megaphone your pom-pom your megaphone your pom-pom and then do the next block and then do the next block and just kind of do it all the way out to the end of the quilt then turn it around and you'll do everything upside down. That'll keep you from getting this all this puffy stuff like I have. It's it's really quite annoying. Okay, so let me just show you how why I love this magnetic hoop. So I'm going to just lift it up. You should just flip it around my neck because this one's a smaller one. And I'm going to just move that up so that the needle is right over my blue dot and I'm just going to slide this down and again I'm going to use my numbers here's a nine here's a nine so I want that seam on a nine this is on a three up here and it's on three and a half back here so let me straighten that out I'm going to tug pull a little bit and this is why I like magnetic hoops because I can tug and pull very easily um, it kind of slips and slides a little bit which helps me for positioning okay that look looking good to me looking good all right so now I'm going to again find my blue my blue dot is right about here I I zoom in you can see my little blue dot so I'm going to move my needle so that well I'm actually going to bring up the right design because I've got the other design I get my little megaphone design. Here we go. All right. Get it into embroidery. All right. Now I'm going to move my needle so that it is over over that design. And I, on this machine, again, I don't have to be that precise, but I can lower the needle down, you know, to see where it falls. If I need to move it up, I can do that. and so on. Um, but I'm going to use the projector because I really like that projector. Ooh, we are we are zoomed in so let me zoom back out and I'm going to just um, let me just show you one thing about the projector. Hold on just a second. Okay so when you want to use a projector it's that uh, upside down ice cream cone. You hit that and you get this little red box. Now if you put your finger in the little red box and hold it it turns blue or black and then you can slide that box up to where you need to to see it that way you can see where that design falls on your um, fabric and then again to bring it down to the bottom portion 
because remember what I'm looking for in this design is I'm gonna move that down some I'm looking for this part of the cone to be a quarter inch from my edge this top part of the cone, uh, megaphone to be a quarter inch from the top edge and both the handles to be a quarter inch from either side um, and it's it's always pretty close when I mark the center this is just giving me like just a little bit more precision um, also before you assemble your quilt, make sure you mark all your quilt blocks. Um, that'll help too. I, I forgot to do that on this one. Okay, so everything's positioned nice. Everything looks good. Now I'm going to advance to that first stitch. I'm going to bring up the bobbin. Needle down, needle up. Pull it up. When you bring up that bobbin, hold it loosely. You don't want to untie any knots. It's going to put like a, make a little knot there and I don't want to untie it. And then I'm going to trim the thread. show you one of the designs that goes around the applique so here I have the touchdown block I've got it all loaded up into the hoop and I've already put the needle um, right over the center mark that I made um, now um, what I would do is I would advance to the first stitch bring up the bobbin and stitch it out and everything should be just hunky-dory wonderful now I do want to show you though um, if you have this just because I have this machine and uh, I just want to tell you one thing if you use a projector so if you do use the projector on your machine one of the things I want to do is you want to make sure you go all the way around the entire design and let me just zoom in here so you can if you were using the projector, I just wanted to tell you that what you need to do is make sure that you are looking at the design all the way around. So here you can see the wrap for you. You can see this line that comes over here is clearing the football. Uh, I'm sorry, not the football, the touchdown goal. Um, you can see it's clearing everything here. There's the football. And if you make it, and what I want to tell you is if you have to make any adjustments left to right, then you should really go around the whole design one more time just to make sure that everything clears the, uh, the applique. Now, I will tell you one of the things that we do when we create these designs is we make sure there's a quarter of an inch around the entire uh, outside of the block so it doesn't go into the seams and then we try and be very generous with our design in and around the design so that nothing stitches over the design but if you hoop straight and if you find that center spot correctly then you should really have no problems at all so I'm going to bring up I'm going to now advance the first stitch starts way up here so it's a little scary but that's the highest point of this design so I know I'm going to be good and I'm going to start the machine I just brought my bobbin up stop it so I can trim and we'll just let it continue to stitch
when you're quilting the goal or the idea is to keep as much fabric as you can on this side of the quilt and as little as possible on this side of the quilt um, where the throat throat spaces for your sewing machine or your embroidery machine. So at some point you're going to have to flip that quilt around so that the majority of the quilt will be over on this side and you will have just a little bit of, of quilt over on the other side. Um, and when you do that your quilt is going to is very directional so everything is going to be upside down so I'm stating the obvious here but you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to rotate that design so that it is upside down and that is usually in the edit function of your machine so you just go in there and you rotate it so that the design is upside down um, this is what mine looks like on the screen you can see the football and the cleat. The cleat is definitely upside down as it should be. And so, and that's pretty much all you do. You set it up just like you do all the other designs. And, you know, <coughs> that's it. Just make sure you rotate your design upside down. Obviously, for your megaphones, you're going to have to turn them sideways as you go down. Um, and that's also done in edit. They come in. Um, straight up and down you'll need to rotate it uh, 90 degrees so that it's sideways and that's pretty much that I'm going to give you a couple head uh, tips about using the magnetic hoop uh, first of all you've seen me um, pull and tug it's very easy to pull and tug and kind of slide the top portion of the hoop around because there are three layers of fabric it does hold together but if you were to have a whole bunch of fabric within this throat space like when you're doing that first column that fabric could get all bunched up and this hoop could hit it and it could slide the hoop over and it could cause your design not to line up. And I've got a great example of that to show you a design that doesn't quite line up. Um, the other thing is quilt drag can have an effect on your hoop. So these quilts get pretty heavy. And this is a you know machine, embroidery machine motor that's pulling the arm of your, that's moving the arm of your uh, embroidery machine back and forth so sometimes that uh, the weight of that quilt falling off the table can cause a little bit of quilt drag and cause the design to get um, out of whack so let me show you the design I have so here is my lovely example and I've got a safety pin because I am going to rip it out that's a good thing about the quilting is you can rip the design out and restitch it if something like this happens but what happened here this is like going down the middle column I had I wasn't paying attention and the hoop bonked um, the a lot of fabric and as you can see um, here it's not connected it got all, uh, offline right down here um, and it doesn't reconnect and it's also you know while this is a very good range left to right this one moved the design up really high so sometimes dorky things like that happen and that's usually a result of quilt drag because um, obviously I've stitched this design out now like 20-30 times and that's the only time that that happened so be what um, you know watch out for that quilt drag watch out for the magnetic hoop hitting all that fabric or um, getting obscured in some way and remember that you can always rip it out and start over it's not that big of a deal hi there okay the very last thing I want to show you is the weightless quilter it sometimes is very helpful to have one of these things they're kind of expensive but like I said sometimes they're very well worth worth having so I've got my machine set up. I'm, right now I'm at the very top of the quilt. I'm on that very last column, very top of the quilt. And I've got all this quilt just hanging off the machine. Now part of it's going to go in my lap and I'm going to support part of it. But the part I'm concerned about is this corner right here because it tends to be, it tends to pull on everything. So what I have is this device called a weightless quilter and I'm going to hook that part up onto the quilt I can't even get this in my picture and then as I'm quilting I will hold 
the rest of the quilt up like this. And you can see this pole is very flexible. It bends. It it, um, it sways, it's very flexible, and that's good because as the arm of the, the embroidery arm of the machine is moving back and forth, this is moving back and forth with it. So I just wanted to show you that. I do use mine uh, a lot, especially when I'm quilting by myself. If I have a friend, I just have the friend hold that end. But uh, when I'm by myself, I find that to be very helpful. That's all. I hope this was, I hope this was helpful. Bye-bye.